Alright everyone, I am back. Now for those that haven't followed me on Twitter, all you might know is that I did some volunteer work last week, but those that did follow me know exactly what I did. I've been playing some Scouting Emblem. Forget about FE5 Iron Man, this was the most exhausting game I have ever played, and I'm glad I didn't have to do it multiple times in a row, just to get it on camera properly with the right commentary. I did record some things with my phone, but obviously I can't show you those, but what I am going to do is give you a war story, so that's what this video is going to be. I'll put some images in the background, those I just grabbed off of Google, they are not representative of what actually happened or anything, they're just background pictures, so <laughs> if you recognize yourself or anyone you know in those pictures, that's just a coincidence. So, Scouting Emblem is a game that a friend of mine showed me. You take a small group of trainees, sometimes known as kids or boy scouts, to a campsite far away from home and help teach them how to do things on their own. For most kids, this mostly involves surviving in a natural environment, like how to pitch a tent, or tie a knot, or build a campfire. But this is a special edition of Scouting Emblem, where all the kids came with additional physical handicaps. Some of them couldn't walk, were partially blind, or needed help with some other things, and those things a lot of other people take for granted. Like, seriously, this was a really eye-opening part of the experience, and after what feels like a million times of pushing a wheelchair uphill to the restroom facilities, it, it really makes you appreciate having a functional body. And when it all comes down to it, this week was all about letting those kids experience life and, you know, nature, without letting their disabilities get in the way. To support these training units, we deployed a team of nine pre-promoted units, including myself and a aforementioned friend to help them out. Most of these people I have only met once or twice before when doing preps, but after a week it really makes you appreciate their character and their dedication to this cause. This isn't exactly something that came from just support or base conversations, but rather, you could tell by their actions during gameplay, the way they helped everyone around them and went out of their way to make everyone comfortable. This is one of the few games where having a complete cohesive team was really important, and I feel like we nailed that part of the playthrough perfectly. Usually when you play Fire Emblem you can leave your units, even trainees, unattended for a fair bit and they will entertain themselves, but with these kids you have to tend to their needs almost constantly. The ones that can walk on their own are usually fine, but the ones that need the most attention are somewhat ironically the ones mounted on wheelchairs. Now don't get me wrong, just like in most Fire Emblem games, being mounted is much better than not being mounted. There is no denying the uh, absurd mobility increase considering how little they can do without the use of their legs. Some mounts even have extra mobility increase through the use of a motorized piece of equipment, but the trainees are also able to work the wheels themselves to cross minor distances. But the mount also comes with a drawback, it's very heavy. When the restroom facilities are somewhat far away and on a small hilltop, you need people to push it. This is the first of many terrain penalties that wheelchair mounts have to deal with. In addition, wheelchairs have trouble with stairways, sand, holes, or just a simple bump in a doorway. They're also big and unwieldy at times, sometimes barely able to fit through a doorway, and other units have trouble walking by them even though normally units of the same affiliation can basically walk right through each other. The best way to deal with a cramped space or a large stairway is to dismount from the wheelchair and support or carry the trainee in question with one person on each side. When doing so, the stats of the carrying units can be greatly reduced, especially their back or spine, so it's important to take proper care of that. Wheelchair trainees can also not be rescued as a whole by most cars. Only large ones with the proper forging can do the job. You need special fastening equipment, a small elevator to get them inside, and of course plenty of space for the whole thing. Thankfully, we were able to get one of these as free DLC from one of the parents, and we were able to use it all week. An important tradition for these scout camps is going on a hike for a couple days. In practice, this meant pushing around three or more wheelchairs, including all kinds of um, terrain penalties and all their fun troubles to solve. Don't get me wrong though, all these challenges were nothing in the face of all the fun we had. Even the hot weather couldn't deter us at all. I think the temperature was usually around 28 Celsius or higher, so that's 82 Fahrenheit for you Americans, and at nights it would actually cool down to around 5 to 10 Celsius or 41 to 50 Fahrenheit, so it was important to pack clothing and armor for both types of circumstances. I mentioned on Twitter that during the hike we actually got to a route split. Just like Leaf, we had the choice of taking the main road or crossing through a forest. Seemingly the same distance, but one was more dangerous than the other. I wasn't the one in charge of navigation, but funnily enough, we ended up going the forest route. Finally a chance for me to see if that was the better choice. In hindsight, I don't think it actually was. Uh, there was a lot of really harsh terrain in the way, and it really taxed our fatigue levels, but it wouldn't be a hike without a proper challenge, and we ended up making it through with no casualties. We did have to undeploy one of our trainees for the remaining of the hike since he was just too fatigued, but that's fine since there was plenty of experience left in the game for him to catch back up. The aforementioned DLC van was around to do this kind of duty, as well as to refill vulnerabilities and even supply food. One moment where our spirits did kind of dip was in the late to end game. 
We had a shared base camp with another group that had some younger kids, and between us we had like 10 tents. We had like a supply tent with fridge and toys, two kitchens slash mess halls, two tents for the trainees, two tents for the pre-promotes, uh, two tents to stay during the day if it would rain, and then a small tent where people on night duty would sleep. Uh, night duty is like, uh, if the kids are sleeping, one of them wakes up and he needs to go to the bathroom, the people on night duty are the ones to take him there. Uh, it was very important to take down and remove these tents as much as possible before the final chapter because we had characters from outside coming in to help out for free and leaving them waiting would be rather rude and bad. Uh, this is where the other group that shared the base camp with us turned out to be greener than expected. And by green I don't just mean inexperienced but also at times as stubborn and unhelpful as the green units you're probably familiar with. I'm not going to go into detail but we ended up doing the majority of the work for no reason. Like no good reason. And in addition... Communication between the two groups just was a bit lacking, but uh, hopefully on the next playthrough it will go better. Uh, I shouldn't be too harsh on them because um, they had less experienced people than our group did. So, uh, like, imagine if I was on the other group, this was, this was my first scout camp. Uh, I might have been just as useless as they were. Uh, I just had the fortune of having people around me who could tell me what to do at just about any time, which let me contribute more. Uh, to end on a positive note though, Friday evening, I think that's chapter 7 if I'm not mistaken, was a highlight. Uh, we held a show night with like songs, jokes, play acts, and games. All of the trainees put up hilarious, adorable, and impressive performances, and so did the promoted units. It was looking like we were able to um, do fine, but then suddenly it, it was looking like we were gonna have to do a hard reset, because for the first time in eight days, eight days of clear skies, grey clouds were forming above us, and upon checking it, it turned out there was gonna be rain. And since we'd already taken down most of the tents, including the ones that everyone was sleeping in, uh, we were planning on sleeping with no roof, we actually had to take some emergency measures, but it worked out alright, everyone woke up dry, but it was definitely a close call. Uh, once I got home, I, I sorted out a mountain of dirty clothes, bigger than the biggest peaks you've ever seen in Fire Emblem, and I proceeded to sleep for about like 16 hours, and I still haven't fully recovered, but it was all worth it. Before I did all of this, I knew very little about both like scouting and physical handicaps, but now it feels like I've been involved with both for years. Uh, these kids were really something special with their own unique gifts, talents, and sense of humor, and this experience has really changed my view on people with a handicap, be it physical or mental. I never necessarily had like a negative opinion on them or anything, but I think subconsciously I sort of forgot that they were not just a group of people with a large disadvantage, but a collection of individuals that just need a little bit more help to get the most out of life. And giving them that help is actually a really fulfilling thing, so uh, if you've never done this kind of thing before, never been given this kind of volunteer work a go, you should probably do it, because it's a lot of fun. Uh, everyone involved is super wholesome, and you always come out a better person than you are. Uh, that's it. Thanks for listening, and we'll return to regular Fire Emblem content soon. Take care. Peace. Bye.